thank you. Um, I uh, just have a few slides here, keep it pretty brief. Um, as you, I spent a little over a decade in school. I got a lot of college football teams to root for, so I'll keep them short here. Um, so my, my interests are why I uh, was asked to do it. First of all, thanks for uh, allowing us to be a part of the discussion. Um, I, part of my role in Iowa is to uh, help manage um, dairy donors with scheduling. Um, and so I'm thinking about this a lot, Co uh, collaborating with all of uh, our colleagues across the country that are, that are handling and doing OPUs on a lot of these uh, younger heifers. So a quick uh, statement, uh, Transova is a publicly traded company now, so we have a statement before our slides. But I know you all read fast, so you already read that, all that. <coughs> um, so Dr. Weigel had a good presentation on, on why genomics is sort of taken over in the, in the dairy industry. Um, so I won't uh, talk much about that, the details there. He, he taught us a lot yesterday. Um, so obviously with the genomics, we can improve the, um, the accuracy of our selection for our donors and, and our clients. Where we come in in this industry is the intensity and also trying to reduce that uh, denominator with generation interval. And so that's led to utilizing IVF in young heifers and using uh, young sires as well to make genetic uh, gain. So again, I have just a few slides to sort of uh, have some discussion here. If anybody has any discussion along the way or thoughts, questions, yell them out at me, that's fine. Um, so why IVF and young heifers? Um, really, there's a couple main reasons why the industry has moved to uh, IVF and these young heifers, and that's mainly because we can do OPU in these pre- or peripubertal heifers. We can in increase the frequency of collection versus uh, conventional embryo collection and then maximize embryo production from very young high genomic bulls as well. I have a better um, chance for success with those young bulls um, than using them with conventional ET. So one thing when we're t talking about this discussion, I think in the industry, um, when we talk with our clients and set expectations and when we talk amongst ourselves is defining what a young heifer is um, because there's just a huge difference physiologically between prepubertal, peripubertal, and pubertal heifers, and there's huge variation within age groups. So, a 10-month-old heifer raised differently um, can have can be significantly different um, than a heifer born in, in, in at the same exact time. So, age at puberty is influenced by a number of things: nutrition, management, health, genetics, etc. And so, really defining. A young heifer isn't a young heifer. Um, when I think of young heifer, I, I'm thinking of this six to ninth month range um, around that peri and, and first part of puberty um, and cyclicity. And then, um, so that's during the first one to three or four OPU events um, that this type of heifer uh, is what I, can, what I think of when we talk about young heifers. So I have just a few slides on uh, donor care because we think this is just paramount to if, if a client believes they're going to start a heifer young or try to start OPUs as young in, in uh, their life as possible, we need to start planning for that essentially at birth. And so anything we can do from health and nutrition, um, animal care, maximizing growth and, um, you know, care that animal from birth to the first OPU um, is, is super important. And these aren't, you know, groundbreaking things. It's just really the basics of if we know at 60 days that this donor is an elite donor and she's headed towards the IVF program, there's steps that we need to take now to get her prepared for success at that eight, nine month range as opposed to waiting for that and, and hoping for success later. So this is a, a client education piece. Um, and also a business, sort of a business model approach is if a client has that super um, elite animal and they don't have the resources or experience to, to manage that donor to get her um, 
to success at eight and nine months, then we need to provide that education for the client or recommend that they um, send that heifer to a facility that can do uh, provide that management, whether that's us or one of our partners. So again, the little things with donor care, once you get them to um, that donor age, um, reducing stress in extreme weather, donor housing, uh, comfortable and managing little things like um, co-mingling, anything we can do to reduce stress is, uh, is, a, is a big win and we see those things um, do influence results and, and help us with our consistency. Um, just a little um, slide here about when do we start OPUs um, and what decision, what are the decision factors that go behind it? Because I think a lot of our clients say, well, can't, let's just start at eight months. You know, as I said, an eight month old heifer raised in a certain facility is totally different than one, and you know, that's been maximized to her potential. So we use, um, I like to use as many pieces of information when deciding to start a donor on o in OPU uh, as I can. So it's not just eight months of age, 600 pounds, it's age, weight, growth, her previous and current health status. I do, um, when possible, we'll do some palpations to look at reproductive tract maturity. Um, and then uh, obviously her genetic merit will take, a, will take a chance a little earlier on a really, really high value, value donor. Um, so these are things that I think we can do to help set us up for success for our clients. Just a couple slides here, recent numbers um, for discussion purposes uh, from Transova Systems. So these are donors housed. Uh, this is oocytes per OPU from Hol just Holstein donors. Um, embryos produced at Transova. These are not all just housed at Transova, so these could be at our satellite centers from coast to coast um, and in uh, three different laboratories from Transova. So um, let's see if I can figure out how to do this. So we have um, the, the bars on top are the number of OPUs. Uh, it's broken down by age and months in, uh, in the heifers there. And you can see um, these young heifers, these seven to eight, nine month old heifers are producing um, really pro probably significant. I, I'm glad my professors are not here that see that I don't have stats on this slide. But um, there's, there's certainly an opportunity there and those eight, nine month old heifers with a lot of um, oocytes per OPU. See the embryo numbers, same setup, broken down by uh, age and months. Um, we have an opportunity to continue to improve with those eight, nine month old heifers. They're giving us oocytes. We certainly have made strides here um, with embryos per OPU in those heifers, but uh, still opportunity to improve with the young heifers. Um, and that's all I have.